solidarity in expressing the pain of the Palestinian people who have been wronged and robbed, especially on this day 42 years ago. We sympathize with their plight and we are embarrassed and humiliated that such crimes have been committed and continue to be committed in our name. Such, such crimes are strictly forbidden by the Torah and they are also serious violations of human rights. But it goes even further than that. According to the Torah, Jews are not allowed to have any state at all. Therefore, we proclaim that authentic Jews around the world have no connection whatsoever to the Zionist, their actions, or their state. The name, identity, and symbols of authentic Jewry have been hijacked and kidnapped and its voice seldom heard because the Zionists persecute and humiliate anyone who does not agree with their ideals and goals. But true Jews throughout the world are strongly opposed to them. The Torah commands us to be submissive, loyal, and peaceful wherever we live. We must be respectful to all human beings and especially to the leaders of the countries in which they reside. This is how Jews always conducted themselves over the centuries and this is how truly observant Jews today continue to conduct themselves. True Jews do not involve themselves in disputing the interest of nations. We condemn the Zionist attacks against President Obama and other world leaders. We as Jews are required to be and are more grateful to the Arab and Muslim countries for the friendship, hospitality, and safe haven that has been accorded to the Jews throughout these thousands of years. This of course includes the people of Palestine and therefore what is being done to the Palestinian people today by the Zionists is to us so much more criminal. We protest against the existence of the Zionist state in general and against their actions in particular. True Jews cry out their pain at the suffering of the Palestinians. And in conclusion, we look forward to the peaceful and speedy end to Zionism and its state, and we look forward to the day when, in the words of the age-old Jewish prayer, all nations will become one in doing their will of the Almighty with a full heart. Amen. The people of Gaza were occupied 42 years ago. Since that time, living under occupation, an occupation condemned by the United Nations, by international law, the United States government has continued to fund this occupation and the war against the people of Palestine. For the last three years, the Palestinian people in Gaza have lived in a state of siege, denied medicine, denied food, denied the right to see a doctor when their children are sick. The Israeli government paid by the United States to the tune of $15 million a day is using food and medicine as a form of collective punishment against the people knowing that it will kill thousands of civilians. This is a crime against humanity. It is a war crime. Right. And what was the act by the Palestinian people in Gaza that required this kind of murderous siege? What was it? It was because they, in a democratic election, put into office the 
Hamas organization right. by democratic vote, That's right. an election that was recognized internationally as free and fair. And so the message of the U.S. government and the Israelis is quite clear. We want elections, but only if you vote in the way we want you to vote. Right. And if you exercise your democratic rights and vote for leaders we don't like, we will kill your children because we will deprive them of food and medicine and access to medical care. That's why we're here today, to stand with Gaza. Gaza is calling and we are answering here in, New here in Washington, in Los Angeles, in San Francisco, and in the next days and weeks, thousands of people from all over the world will be taking humanitarian relief into Gaza, demanding that the people have the right to live. Occupation is a crime. That's why we're here. The people of the United States are spending through our tax dollars $15 million a day for a criminal occupation. Right. Instead of killing poor people in Gaza in the West Bank, let's use that money for education and housing and health care to let children live, not only in Gaza, but right here in Washington, D.C. Let's put people before occupation. Let's say to the whole world that the Palestinian people have a right to live. Everyone always says to the Palestinians, do you support Israel's right to, to exist? The real issue is do the people of Gaza have a right to exist? Because right now, their lives are in danger. Money for jobs and education.